stranger to celebrations and big moments. Today is another. There is one more mid-major ticket yet to be punched. One more big moment taking place. One more celebration to be staged. One more team to realize a dream fulfilled. And we welcome you once again to Championship Week, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Today, it's the championship game of the Sun Belt Conference Tournament as the three-seed Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns take on the top-seed Georgia State Panthers. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Ronkowski. Short. Good offense, though. I like the inside-out and reversal. Spin move. Harrell, beautiful. He changes speeds so well, so effectively, and so intelligently. Ryan Harrow, the transfer from Kentucky. Bomberly leans in, no good. And Kreider comes away with it. Here's Harrow on the leak out. Got the foul. And with 11.47 to go, we've got a good one brewing already in the Sun Belt. Ryan Harrow leading the way. His team trailed by two. Big conferences. So it hasn't necessarily stolen a bid. But there are a lot of teams sitting on pins and needles. But one of those teams that lost their conference championship, Green Bay, Brian Wardle, they are sitting right now, and they are tight. Because it's going to be tight for Green Bay as whether or not they get in. Xavier Rimmer is on fire with three triples already. Arrow, nice take. There's that change of speeds again. I'm going to go old school on him. He reminds me of Earl the Pearl Monroe, the way he changes speeds, the way he can spin off the dribble. He's so herky jerky. He's hard to guard. Nothing but air. Harrow comes away with it. He splits the defenders. And draws the foul. And Ryan Harrow determined to make good off this miss. Now, he misses that shot. That's bad. The good thing is, there were three defenders focused on him, and nobody guarded him. That's how hard he is to guard. You focus on him, but he changes speeds, he changes direction. He's like a ghost that just goes, hello, goodbye, and all of a sudden he's to the rim. Georgia State, third in the nation in free throws, and they're showing why already. Five for five so far. As a team, they shoot it over 77% for long this afternoon, and that's good news for Bob Marlin considering one of the weaknesses in Sean Long's game is his blocked away by Washington. Harrow on the leak out. Easy two. I like the way R.J. Hunter caught that outlet pass, looked straight up floor. Harrow on the snowbird. Watch R.J. Hunter. Look at the vision right there. He immediately looks up floor, and Harrow on the fly. Checks back in. Marcus Kreider back to the bench. Arrow knocks down the front end of the one and one to put him in double digits with 10. You know, a lot of guys play at one speed. Some play at two. He's got three and four different speeds that he uses to his unfair advantage. He coaches, all I ever wanted was an unfair advantage. The Ryan Harrows of the world are an unfair advantage at Georgia State. But I just wish I could enjoy it more, but sister and mom love it. Davenport grabs the rebound off the miss. And Harrow takes it away. Nice sequence by Ryan Harrow. He has 13. Rebound. Seven lead changes in the game. And there's Harrow again to the cup. Little hesitation and then explode to the basket. Manny Atkins, we have a media timeout under 16 minutes. This one's going to come down to it. A close one in the Sun Belt. Off. Georgia State only their second game. Another beautiful take by Ryan Harrow, who has 19. Stop and go, as good as anybody. I love the way Ryan Harrow plays. Patience with explosive quickness. Ten minutes left, one point game. Harrow up and under. 
Georgia State is abusing the interior defensive end. Harrow again gets the foul on Davenport. And Ryan Harrow is going to go to the line and shoot two. Leading all scores with 21 points. Ryan Harrow is going to go to the line and try to extend the Georgia State lead with 8.17 to go. Ryder will go to the bench, get a dap from his coaching staff. And there's Mark watching his son Ryan. Asked Ryan about that before the game. He said, my dad usually likes to sit by himself. He's one of those guys. <laughs> Enjoying what he's seeing right now. His son has a game high, 23. As a father, Bomalu, second chance opportunity. Knocked away. Harold got the contact and the bucket. There aren't many guards surrounded by five black jerseys that I would say as a coach, go ahead and make a play. Ryan Harrow is one of those special guys. I'm going to turn him loose. No good. Here's Harrow again. He's constantly surveying and probing. Oh, my goodness. Ryan Harrow is putting on a show. That's Ryan Harrow against everybody the last two possessions in a row. Watch Ryan Harrow. He's defended by a four-man committee in black jerseys. All four jerseys and a fifth coming into play, but Ryan Harrow still makes the play. And you know what? I kind of like it. And then he goes against four more defenders and lays it up on the backside. It's one versus five, and Ryan Harrow is dominating. Number 31 on the boards this afternoon. Very good. He hasn't scored as well, but he's contributed in other ways, especially on the glass. It's too easy. It's too easy, number 55, Ryan Harrow. It's Ryan Harrow's world, and we're just living in it. And Pops, you can breathe easy. He came home because his dad had a stroke. He wanted to play closer to his father. And his father is here today. And there is one proud papa in the stands watching number 55 who said, I wish I could play for my dad. Number 55, you are today on national TV. So many times, Mark, we hear athletes talk about being in the zone. My friend, we're witnessing that right now with Ryan Harris and just sit back and enjoy the opportunity to see father and son together. An emotional day for dad, and we all understand why. And they get the foul. You were expecting that bucket to drop, weren't you? I was expecting it to drop. And so is he and everybody else in this arena. But the way that he changes speeds again. He attacks and then pulls back. And he's patient, waits for the defender to just relax for half a second. And he blows right by him. Harrell has just one miss at the free throw line. He has 30 points. His career high came earlier this year, 34. He now has 31 this afternoon in the biggest game of his career. Well, Kentucky playing the SEC championship, and this young man, Ryan Harrow, transferred from Kentucky to Georgia State, has put on a show in the Sun Belt Championship. And he transferred to be close to his father, who had had a stroke, and he came home. That's good news for Georgia State. You know what, Rich? It's not Father's Day, but it sure feels like it here at New Orleans. Be still my beating heart says Mark Harrell, feeling better, able to watch his son play in so many games living in the Atlanta area where Georgia State is based. And Ryan Harrell, one of the most soft-spoken, gentle, kind-hearted college basketball players we've ever had the good fortune of spending some time with, has as close a relationship with his dad as any player I've come across. Well, when everybody's talking about, including us, the R.J. Hunter, Ron Hunter relationship, 
we've also become familiar with the Ryan Harrow, Mark Harrow relationship, and what a special one it is. Three to shoot. Inside, Washington. The follow, Harrow. But wait, they say it didn't touch the rim. They're going to confirm. They're gonna I confirm. think it did hit the backside of the rim. Tim Gaddis called 35 second shot clock violation. Ray Natilli jumped in and said, We're going to have to check. Hit it right did. there. It, it hit, hit the rim. So that, that would mean good. fresh 35 and another two points for Ryan Harrow. Here he is. Yes! Double screen for Harrow. In the lane. No good, but a foul call. Number 44, J.J. Davenport was on the floor. Bob Marlin didn't put him in. He's going smaller with Kevin Brown checking in. Harrow hits the first. He's tied his career high with 34. His father, Mark, watching on. New career high for Ryan Harrow in a virtuoso performance, 35 points to bring his Georgia State Panthers to within one, 80 to 79 with 31.8 left. Please. Smart. Harrow, easy to the hole. Live to fight another day. That's what Ryan Harrow did right there. Just extended this game by getting the two and keeping it tight. And when you've got R.J. Hunter can bang Rimmer back at the line. He's knocked down his last two, but he missed that one. Attack 15 again. seconds left. One point game. Five seconds. Harrow. Off the mark. And the raging Cajuns are Cajuns rocking win. and rolling. Their first trip to the dance in nine years. They win three games in three days, the last against the top two seeds in the Sun Belt. And the final Cinderella at the dance is Louisiana Lafayette. Despair for the Georgia State Panthers. Elation for the Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns. Once again, our final score, Louisiana 82, Georgia State 81 in overtime.